Give it two or three minutes, Dan. Just give it another two or three minutes. Okay. Well, you don't want to. Okay. Well, we're live nonetheless. We're live. Okay. Well, we're not well. Live. That doesn't mean we have to, you know, we can wait. <laughs> no, that's fine. I mean, people, sometimes people just like to look at us. You know, they are stuck. <laughs> There's Didi Van, Van, Van Boo, Van, who's rock star over here somewhere. She's probably walking into the place now. I can see her. And uh, oh, there's a uh, Ron Ripple, of course. And I can't see who's coming behind. Didi's muted. I don't know if you're trying to talk to us. Or not. Oh, good morning. Oh, hey, good morning, Didi. Sit here. Then we well, I'll have to take back all the bad things I said about Dr. Rican time because he's here. Oh, he is. Well, he's only one minute. Well, that's not bad. Perfect. There is the man. Perfect. Hey, Arturo, how are you? How's it going, guys? Great seeing you. Happy Friday. Great. All right, Lawrence, you want to get rolling? Yes, sir. Let's do that. All right. Let's do it. So, we ready? Yep, go ahead. We're live. Okay. So, good morning, everybody. And it is, of course, Friday. And it's now the beginning of the month, November. So we still have exciting times between now and December. There's a lot of things we can do. The slaughterhouse of failure is not in our destiny. Destiny. Unless you give up. And then the slaughterhouse of failure is in our destiny. Otherwise, we will persevere until we succeed. So um, we're at the uh, at the uh, healthcare forum in Utah. Dan is in sunny, cold Pennsylvania, and we've got a special guest here today, who's Arturo Lisano, Doctor Arturo Lisano from Costa Rica. And so <clears throat> Dan and I thought we might find out who is this guy and ask him a few questions. And we talked about something this week on our calls, and we talked about getting to know the people with whom we work. How well do we know them? You know, who are they? Who are their kids? Do we know anything? So here's a good opportunity to actually start playing with this idea with um, Dr. Lisano, who's a, a, a functional medicine doctor. So, I could start a question and then Dan, you can jump in any time as well, obviously, and see what you think. So, Dr. Arturo Lizano, who is Arturo Lizano and where do you live? Good morning, everyone. Thanks for inviting me. I'm here with my good friend uh, and mentor, as I call him, Mr. Lawrence, in beautiful chilly Utah. <laughs> it's a beautiful chilly morning here. Um, and I flew all the way in from San Jose, Costa Rica. So I'm from out of country. I, I am Costa Rican and I live in Costa Rica. And um, happy to be here. I'm a functional medicine practitioner. I, I went to med school. I'm, I'm M conventionally MD trained in Costa Rica. And then many years later, uh, I always say regenerative medicine found me. Uh, while I was here in the U.S., trying to to uh, get into a psychiatry residency program, clearly that didn't happen because I I quickly became enamored and, and passionate about about functional and regenerative medicine. Um, uh, crazy how time flies! It's been almost twelve years since since I've been practicing functional medicine. I trained here in the United States, and I practice back home in my in my beautiful Costa Rica. So I've been in practice for twelve years now, trying to um, one person at a time change the way that we see and the way that we approach health, because we all know health is no longer what it used to be. Um, are you married? I'm married. I have two young kids. Two, two little boys, uh, Diego and Federico. 
So they are now my my new driving force to try to change the system more than ever. So my two kids can grow up in a in a healthier environment and not not the sick world that we're in right now. So what does your wife work? My wife is an interior designer and she and her, one of her best friends have an interior design firm. Uh, they've been going at it for a long time as well, for about over 16 years. They're very successful and they do amazing work. So you said you've been in this business for 12 years. I have. I have. Why did you get into this business? Well, it was very interesting. I Like I just said, uh, it's it's crazy how regenerative medicine found me. I was I was here in the states looking for looking for a psychiatry program, which is what I wanted to train in. And I just started hearing about all these new <laughs> new different things happening in the in the health arena that were innovative and and were you know looking to change the way the health system is. And I really became quickly connected with that with that and uh, I truly believe in the power of prevention and the power of education and I truly believe that we can reverse chronic disease if we change our lifestyle and so that's why I decided to how to move into this <clears throat> into this field how long was it how long did it take you to pull the trigger and decide <laughs> uh, an action on getting involved with the business it, it, it took me a while. It took me a while. I'm uh, define a while. Uh, it took me. It took me months. Uh -huh. It took me months to to <laughs> to start to consider to to <laughs> shift from conventional medicine into something more innovative and um, and if you want to use the word alternative. So yeah, it took it took me it took me months for sure. Yeah. It, it was it was not an overnight decision by by no means. But the reason I'm asking this is because um we deal with a lot of doctors and we've got to try and understand the mentality of the doctor. And in this case, um Dr. Arturo is a very, very thorough investigator. And he I I crit I criticized him, if you will, for um, paralysis by analysis, because he was so analytical that he wanted to know everything. And finally, this is where patience comes in. Finally, he said, "My goodness, there's no more. There are no more unanswered questions," and that is, I think, huge. And then he became a raving fan. But there are a couple of things to consider with this. Michael Cook, who's actually sitting here too, he he was the person that actually um, got my, got Dr. Arturo Lizano into the business. And it was from perseverance and persistence and friendship and, and talking about stuff that wasn't having anything to do with our business that Michael was able to maintain and sustain the interest of Arturo. So, you know, Michael... You know, the persistence and perseverance, that's one of the words we need. <clears throat> Excuse me, go ahead. No, um, yeah, so I actually met Arturo at a health fair, uh, a, a health fair, a, a medical expo in San Jose, Costa Rica. We were fairing last night, it was about 10 and a half years ago. And I was working with another product that I had, not uh, not in the healthcare space. It was a, It was an antimicrobial product. And I was still questioning uh, the business somewhat myself. I was on product, I loved it, but um, I'd been introduced to the business and I had four other companies at the time that I was uh, working with. And I didn't see a fit immediately. And I didn't have the time either in my mind. I, that, was, that was an excuse that I made up. But uh, I, I took a break at the end of the day and I was walking around the expo and Arturo was in a, uh, in a booth, a regenerative medicine clinic booth and um, I just walked over. I was just curious. And I said, hey, are, are you at all interested in pharmaceutical grade supplements or nutraceuticals? And his reaction changed my life. And he didn't know at the time it changed his as well. That, you know, his response was he looked down the aisle. There was a GNC booth set up and he pointed out and says, please tell me you've got something better than this. I'm going to substitute a word here. Crap that I can recommend to my patients. And that was in a wake up call for me. And ever since then, um, I've, I've, Arturo and I have become 
almost best friends. He's like my brother. Uh, you know, we, we talk weekly uh, numerous times. Uh, he and his wife have been to my house in Naples. And we're on this, this journey together that uh, that we're both not only thriving in, but, but we're loving it. So. so this is where it becomes important, where we have... Um, where we have a uh, relationship with with the people that we are working with. So it's it's it, it's a journey. And the big key in all this, I think one of the successful things about this is that we've talked about it, but the aim and the scope is to be able to have the physicians become raving fans. And he's, it's now 12, 12 years. So we got some slow learners. That's okay. 12 <laughs> years. It's all right. You know, it takes a <laughs> but at the same time, we now have a raving fan where this is a doctor that is 100% on board, more than 100%. He's come now this, this week. He's also brought some other physicians with him all the way from Costa Rica. And here are various lessons. Um, the lessons are are what we talk about all the time: perseverance, persistence, in goal in mind, not giving up, and and maintaining a strict, a close relationship with the people we work with, and learning who they are, and why they do the business, and how we can help. Dan, I, you go ahead. Yeah, I mean, this you know, this all comes back to mindset, right? You know, the mindset of Michael to you know look outside of his comfort zone, outside of health, outside of nutrition, you know, all of those different things. And to be able to look outside of that and say, you know, there's an opportunity for me to grow here because my mind isn't holding me back. And then Arturo, obviously, knowing that he can do better for his patients, you know, through his family and through his patient population, being open to looking at Pharmanex and the biophotonic scanner and how that could benefit his patients, right? So it's keeping an open mind. And, you know, one of the thing that, things that really drives me crazy is when I'm talking to somebody and I have a five minute conversation with them about what we're doing and we don't get in too deep into the weeds and they just say, oh, I'm not interested, you know? And I'm, you know, you don't know what you're not interested in. How can you say you're not interested in the opportunity? So just the mindset of being open to learning new things, knowing that you can always be growing. Um, and then through this business, you're going to grow tremendously. So, you know, what was your mindset, you know, how you could help your patients, Dr. Uh, Lozano, and how have you seen them benefit from incorporating this into your practice? Well, I, if, if I can, if I can just share something very quickly, you, you said something very important that I always tell my my colleagues because of course we in the medical field are very I we're very stubborn I'm not the only one I'm the one that I get picked on the most but <laughs> by Lawrence but <laughs> I'm not the only one and I tell my friends listen I seriously I'm no smarter than you all I did was I I just one day decided I wanted to be more open about you know the way I approached my my practice my patients and I allowed myself you know I just kind of trying to get into this uh mindset talk you know I allowed myself to start thinking differently you know think, uh, thinking outside the box and allowing myself to learn something new because of course we're all very we're trained you know just very rigidly in in, uh, in med school so so the only thing I did different was just have a different way of thinking and allowed myself to learn something new. And it took me a while. It has, you know, I'm I mean, I'm, I'm still here, not just because I, I brought people because I like to come and learn new things and see what's happening and, and get up to speed because, you know, the innovative arena is <laughs> evolved very quickly. So I want to always be, be up to speed with everything, but I think the most important thing is I allowed myself to just think a little more, to be a little more open about, about the way I was doing things. And it, it, it hasn't been easy, but it's definitely been worth it for sure. Most, most so, of us have a fear of doing new things of, yeah. Growing. 
um, of doing what's not generally accepted in our particular field of expertise. And it's, you know, no different in medicine. You know, there's a huge fear, I think, from doctors for physicians of trying to do something that, that most people aren't in their profession aren't doing, right? Because you're worried that you're gonna, you may be ostracized. But, you know, COVID brought the, this whole nutrition thing to the forefront. And now it's, I think it's an easier conversation to have with your colleagues and your patients because everybody kind of saw through COVID that being more nutritionally healthy, having antioxidants in your system is extremely beneficial. Right. So it's a lot easier conversation. I was um, looking around on LinkedIn last night and I saw all these orthopedic reps posting about their their annual uh, their big meeting right now, the American Academy of Hip and Knee Surgeons. But I saw I and I, and I never thought this was going to happen. I saw all these posts about the buzz this year is about nutrition in orthopedics. And I'm just like, I never saw thought that I would see that day. And so, you know, there's some good things that came out of COVID and that's one of them. And so I think it's, you know, that that fear maybe that existed pre-COVID maybe isn't as as big as it is now because of COVID. So what do you say about fear? Oh, fear is definitely up there because, you know, <clears throat> you get bullied a lot. <laughs> and even as a grown man, you don't like to get bullied. So, you know, I, during my 12 years, a lot of the, one of the many reasons why I also procrastinated and and was slower and, and more diligent about, you know, about getting into this was the fear of, of being the outsider, right? Being the, uh, having, you know, the fear of my colleagues once again telling me, what are you doing? That's nonsense. That doesn't work. You know, we went to med school and we know none of this is 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 working or, or makes sense. So, so yeah, so there is a fear factor there because, you know, and then there comes a point in time where you don't want to talk to anyone about it, even though you know this is an amazing thing that you want to share because of the fear of being rejected and the fear of, and I was told by my mom many times that she loves me, so I don't really have <laughs> self-esteem issues, but... <laughs> But rejection is never fun. And so when you get rejected over and over again, uh, yeah, you know, this this insecurity and this fear starts to arise again. So it's another reason why I come to all the way from Costa Rica. I flew yesterday a, a lot, <laughs> happily to be here once again, to surround myself with all of these amazing peers, remind myself that I'm on the right track, remind myself that you know, talk to the scientists. I know I'm doing scientifically driven stuff and I'm not just making stuff up. And so the fear goes away. So for me, the educating and surrounding myself with with like-minded individuals is very, very, very uh, important. It's very supportive. At least that helps with my fear, if you want to call it that, which definitely is up there. So, you know, if we look back on what you said, um, decided. These yeah. are some key words I pulled out. Yeah. I decided to do, to yeah, do something. Yeah, it was a choice. I always tell everyone, this is a choice. You know, you don't have to do anything in life. You choose to do things. And I chose to do this differently. And I'm glad I did. Now, the decision was 12 oh, years ago. Amount of, of research now that nutrition really is important. And it's been there for a long time. It's just that people chose to ignore it especially in the medical field, because you were taught pharmaceutical medicine, right? And so you know, it's it's really undeniable if you have an open mind and you really want to help your patients mitigate chronic disease through proper nutrition and lifestyle choices. So how much time do you spend talking to your patients about nutrition? And how much time do you spend talking to them about lifestyle choices? A lot. A lot. So as a functional medicine practitioner, my, my appointments are longer than the usual. You know, I, I'm able, I choose, I choose to spend as much as, as an hour, sometimes even more with my patients. I, you know, I, I've sometimes even had two hour interviews with my patients 
which of course, once again, my colleagues find ludicrous. They think I'm completely psychiatric to spend that amount of time with a patient. But then, so it gives me the time to be able to educate them because I was, I was telling uh, the people at the table yesterday that for me, education is key because if you don't teach your patients why and what for, then it's not sustainable through time. Because then once again, it's what my doctor told me. And I don't want them to say that. I don't want them to say, it's what my doctor told me to do. I want them to understand why they're doing it and what for. And so for that, I have to educate them. You have to. And so I spend time with them on every appointment to make sure that they understand that this is a priority. And so, it's a choice for them. It's a choice for them, right? Just as you keep saying, you choose. choose. So I give, I hand them the information and then you choose to take it. It's like I said, Dan, this is your journey, not mine. I'm here to guide you. I'm not here to steer the wheel. You're the one that's driving, okay? So I'm GPS, I'm Google Maps. I'm just telling you how to get there more responsibly, quicker, nicely, better roads, but you're the one in the driver's seat. So you get to choose, do you wanna do this or not? And then it's on. So that also creates accountability. That also, so the patient also knows that if it goes well, it's because you choose this. And if it doesn't, it's because you choose this. Don't be blaming me, okay? So, yeah. So I, I, I want to make a, a just a, to, to see something. He decided 12 years ago, but he did so much research, which we thought was, oh my gosh, he now wants to know another bit of information, which who knows we're going to find that. But by the time he got absolutely sure of what he was doing, then he was able to have the passion to be able to impart this with the patients. So he, he took really, it whatever time it took to become totally knowledgeable on the subject that he is, that he's the medicine, the medical field. So this has become important for the physician to really know what they got, research it. You know, we say, have a look at the science. Yeah, but how many of them do? This guy did. Dr. Lisano looked at every single letter of every word and upturned it and outturned it 55 times before he decided to action. And I think this is important. We've got to take the time it takes to actually get the physicians to really understand what we've got. And not just to have oh, I've got a little device here and you know not take take it so seriously. And the open mindedness, it takes courage, as I just said. Even though his mom loves him, he didn't think anybody else did, and he was getting hammered from everybody else except Michael, including Michael and me. But he he stay, he stood the course because he had unswerving belief in what he had seen. He spoke to the scientists. He knew what he was doing. And I, if I could say something too, where's that journey taking you now? You're one of the most sought out uh, physicians in uh, prevent in um, regenerative medicine in Costa Rica. You, you're working with a new, you have your own practice, but you're working with a new, uh, a new, co a new company as well. You want to say a few words about that? <laughs> uh, I don't want to blush. So it, it's always hard to talk about yourself. So yeah, because. Um, I've been doing this for so long because I'm stubborn and passionate. Um, then I've become one of the, it's a big word, but I've become one of the pioneers in regenerative medicine, functional medicine in Costa Rica by a mile. You know, there are now more people coming around, which I'm, which I'm happy and grateful for, but for sure, I'm, I'm, and I have a very, very, very busy practice. And I'm getting called constantly to to do talks and and um, and speak. And I get WhatsApps every day to, to have new patients come see me. And and now and now more colleagues are actually calling me uh, so I can help them with their patients because they're struggling and they don't seem to be able to 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 know how to help their patients. So. So yeah, it has been a very rewarding, a very, very rewarding journey because, because now, uh, I guess like any human being, now I'm getting the, 
the more than the attention, the recognition Excellent. for all my for all for all my efforts, you know, and um that's 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 amazing, you know, and to be able to make my family proud, make myself proud, make my mom who still loves me and tells me that she loves me and make her proud <laughs> is amazing. But yeah, it's been it's been a long journey. It's been a long journey. But it's been, it's worth it. It's been it's been amazing. So the result of all that is lead by example. That's what you've done now. You do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, we we this same can, channel has got to go to the forum. So we got like three minutes. So I just want to say, so lead by example. So you took the plunge. You yeah. took, you had the courage, even though it you were fearful to do something against all your peers. Yeah. But once you know what you know. Do you think anybody's going to convince you otherwise? No, now, now, I now my stubbornness is now exponentially multiplied, and now I um, now I'm having more and more colleagues listen to what I have to say and and coming to me for for answers for questions and and for guidance. You know, I have now I even have doctors uh, come to me as patients. And and they're all following my lead. They, they they allow me to guide them in their health journey. So it's very it's 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 truly humbling to know that I even had actually one of my professors call me the other day, and he came to my office and he's like, I, I want you to help me. You know, this is a retired seventy six year old, the one of the fathers of plastic surgery in my country. And he found out what I was doing and he called me and came to my office and, and now he's become my patient. So it's, 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 it's very emotional sometimes, you know, to think that someone of his stature is coming to me for help is very, very amazing. It's just, it's, it's, it's very, it's, it's hard to explain. So there's so many, so many, so many lessons from that, you know, even through the adversity, through the obstacles, you've still found a way to persist and succeed um, in your field, in your country. And, you know, so I want to thank you for being here with us. We do have to wrap it up. I want to thank you for being here with us, Arturo. Um, every time I see you, it makes me smile. Um, when Lawrence said we're going to interview this morning, I was like all charged up because you're a, you know, you're a tremendous uh, example for all of us about positivity and the growth mindset and um, I think about you often, and whenever I do, I always uh, it always brings a smile to my face. So thanks for joining us this morning. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Well, thank you very much for the invitation. I, I was I wasn't expecting this once again, but I'm glad I'm here. And if, you know, it's just it's just about spreading the love, sharing the message. You know, I I, I didn't invent this. I I'm just you know I just want others to know about it and know there's a better way. So thank you for allowing me to share my story with such amazing people. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank All you. right. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Thanks, we'll everybody. see you next week. Have a week. great day, everybody. Excuses. No more excuses. Please. No more excuses. Thank you, Dr. Lozano. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Dr. Lozano. Way to go, guys. Thanks, Doc. Hi, Dan. See ya.